The following videos are so scary that I don't think you can handle all of them. Number 5. A YouTuber named Wokan Cha is on a mission to explore the most haunted places in Pakistan faster than anyone in the history of ghost hunting. Since August of 2019, he has investigated no less than 60 paranormal locations. But for time's sake, let's focus on these top 3 scariest ones. In September of 2019, he travels to a house possessed by demonic desert spirits called Jinns. He takes a single step in the first room and already Eddie feels a cold presence warning him to stay away. Then the door across the room closes so slowly you have to watch the shine of his camera light to see it. When he fearlessly takes a few steps forward, a ghostly white arm reaches for the knob to shut it the rest of the way, at which point his flashlight turns itself off. The same door clatter loses again behind him. Someone's on the other side, but whether it's a ghost or a member of his crew is what I want to know. Also, what is he saying here to provoke such an angry response? Nobody is on the other side of the door, at least no one that I can see, though I suppose someone could be ducking under the camera here to make it look that way. But that's when he sees it, the thing responsible for closing the door, a white apparition who glides away without a word. It's creepy for sure but also questionable, because he sees the ghost and then enters the room looking the exact opposite way for some reason, which makes me think that they could have digitally added the ghost later. Next, he hears something so eerie and insane that it almost has to be edited. Let me know if you think it's legit, because if so, then this is pretty much proof of the supernatural. voices, perhaps children, whose lives the djinn has snuffed. The ghost hunter understandably seems reluctant to go any further, and perhaps senses a great danger is near. As it turns out, he's right. <laughs> No one seems to be inside of this room, but as he timidly rounds the corner, I think I see this grey figure in a cloak standing on the other side, the djinn itself. It's blurry, yes, but something nonetheless seems to be looking straight at him. The top arrow is its face, and the bottom its outstretched hand, palm up. He flees then and there, but on February 2nd of 2020, returns to the home for another look. I think they might be saying that something is on the roof here, but I need your help to translate and make sure. Apparently, whatever it is, it's now in the room with them, so they step outside. They take a short breather, but as soon as they're back inside, the trouble starts once again. I'm pretty sure he's asking for confirmation of a ghost during this part, and soon he gets a response. At which point this chain on a nail begins to sway back and forth for well over 10 seconds, completely on its own. Doors slam shut, but Wokan Cha is determined to go further than before, and eventually he comes across a bizarre straw hut that fills him with unexplainable dread. The earth looks recently disturbed. Anything could be buried beneath the rubble. He's contemplating the structure when the spirits become restless. Astaghfirullah. Or maybe it's just a string tied to a tree. Either way, he seeks shelter in an area that's just as haunted as everywhere else, and soon he hears voices coming through the walls. At this point, you would think nothing could stop this fearless explorer. Doors slamming, groaning moans, and objects moving on their own aren't enough to make him leave. But the part that scares him the most is literally nothing at all. A presence that we can't see and only he can feel. Is this part real or just good acting? A deep sea condition, eh? Allahu Akbar! Astaghfirullah! 
He turns around and looks at the corner as if something had just brushed by. Whatever touched him leaves him too scared to re-enter. I've saved the creepiest one of all for last, a paranormal adventure that takes place on October 23, 2019. That's when Wokun Shaw travels to a site full of unmarked burials. Many of them are child-sized. It's a calm night and crickets chirp as he says a few words that I would like translated because they sound very somber and sorrowful. <laughs> The stillness of the night is soon replaced by a rushing whisper that sounds lonely and paranormal, a rising cry of anguish possibly originating from the other side of life. As he reaches an old memorial, he hears another voice call out, a near laugh. And approximately two minutes later, the same voice laughing. His nervous fear is overpowered by a morbid curiosity to stay and see who the voice belongs to. I was halfway expecting a hand to bust forth from the earth, but what happens next is just as frightening. Allahu Akbar. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. He checks around the side of the building and sees nothing. He's all alone again, just himself in the graves. I wish Wokun Shaw all the best, but at the same time really hopes he slows down to a safer rate of exploring. If he keeps this up, it's only a matter of time before something really bad happens to him. And at this rate, he might not even make it to his 100th video. Number 4 There's a YouTube channel called Happy Life that ironically explores some of the most miserably haunted places in all of Pakistan. Happy Life began as a spiritual advice channel, and now they hope to better understand the darker side of spirituality through paranormal investigations like this one. This time, the Happy Life crew intends to check out a haunted school where numerous students were said to have lost their lives. Early on, they encounter a poltergeist who is intent on chasing them away. The first encounter sounds like it's throwing plates, but then it graduates to a heavy bottle that could have really done them harm. Doors also repeatedly close as if something really doesn't want them to go any further. But the more I look at it, the more I think the cameraman is responsible for all of this rather than a ghost. The objects always just so happen to be thrown from the cameraman's direction. A strange coincidence. And the camera person always seems to be within arm's reach whenever the doors close. So I think he is either kicking it or else pushing it shut with his free hand. But when they get to the very top of the school, they find this mysterious red streak of dried up liquid overlooking the balcony. So even though parts of this video may have possibly been embellished, perhaps a student really did lose their life here after all. The situation only gets weirder when they come across a star in the hall that could have been used as a ritual or simply drawn by them to make the video scarier. I think it could be real though, because look what happens soon after one of them kneels in the middle. The way it echoes down the hall sounds forcefully loud and possibly real. One of them explores a room, while the other records from outside the window. No one else is nearby, so then tell me who is responsible for what happens next. They decide the inside is too dangerous to go any further and stick to the outer perimeter. Eventually, they come across a shallow well that gives off a residual negative energy that could be left over from a terrible and tragic event. Something compels them to climb inside, and sure enough, the dirt has been freshly disturbed. An ore passes left to right over the small grave as he plucks this fragment of human and holds it to the camera. Number 3 Gary Reed Unfrequented World is the name of a YouTube channel that, at first glance, seems chock full of ordinary outdoor vlogs and entertainment. 
Gary goes on photography and metal detecting excursions, and generally enjoys hiking his large property in the northern Ontario wilderness, often accompanied by his loving family. But something threatens the tranquility of Gary Reed's unfrequented world, a screaming cryptid deep in the woods that can twist trees in its powerful grasp. But more on that in a second. First, let me talk about Gary and why his observations matter more than the average YouTuber. Born in the small Ontario town of Redbridge, Gary Reed has been surrounded by woods his whole life. Aside from a lifetime of first-hand experience exploring the local lands, he also has a degree in environmental science and understands his surroundings on an advanced biological level. So when he says there is something out there that he can't explain, it probably means you or I can't either. His first encounter with it was at the age of 18, while staying in a cabin on Rabbit Lake, October 19th, 1994. That's when he heard a scream that sounded like a woman, but not quite. He describes a second scream as a wail, crescendoing into a howl, like nothing he's heard before. It ran through the entire camp, screaming from one side to the other. Then it was gone. On April 30th, 2020, he heard it again. That sucks. Can hear screaming. It sounds almost human, but not quite. Guess this thing is still going on over here. Here it is again with the audio turned up. I know foxes can make some weird noises, but this sounds like a person enraged. Camera in hand, he sneaks quietly towards the direction of the screaming to see what he can find. His trained eye detects a strange break in this tree, along with other trees that have been toppled over, all of them facing the same direction, like someone was running fast through the forest. There's one there. And next to the strange scene is a braided bunch that looks like something strong twisted it into this shape. Let me know if there is any other way for these branches to fuse together if not by sheer force. The deeper he goes, the more it looks like something large has stomped through. Oddest of all are these large tracks left by what he suspects is a cryptid that walks upright. Not mine. It's clear to me that these are not your average boots. Like toe prints in here. You can almost see the toes. At 10 minutes and 25 seconds, he tries to trace an outline of its toes, but I think he's a little off. Here's where they begin in my opinion, much bigger. The next day, he measured the results, and it reminds me of a certain cryptid with particularly big feet. I'm sure you know who I mean. 13 and a quarter inches. I think it's real, but just to throw out a counterpoint, I will say that rain from the day before could have eroded the snow and could have made an otherwise normal footstep seem much larger. Now let's switch over to some trail camps set up by Gary. This evidence, taken exactly a month earlier on March 3rd, is the most compelling of all. On March 7th, four days later, he and his neighbor hear another scream so shrill, it sounds like it belongs to a child. He hurries out the door and finds himself alone and vulnerable in the pitch black night. I gotta turn the dish back on, I can hear whistling. A pair of animal eyes look at him from behind, but I think it might just be the light reflecting off his glasses back into the camera. But I could be wrong, because when they check around the same area the next day, his dog becomes agitated and seems not to want to proceed any further. Something is definitely up ahead. Maybe they are getting close on its trail. Not that its trail is especially hard to find when it leaves a path of giant bent trees in its wake. Could nature have done this? Probably not. It looks like something huge reached up and pulled it down. That's a pretty big one. And half a minute later, he finds this tree with a branch literally twisted off and set back in place. This doesn't look like a normal break to me because the tree looks rather healthy. 
That's about eight feet. And it's got a good twist to it. Here's another perfectly healthy tree with green leaves, this time ripped in half by something strong, or maybe simply struck by lightning. Either way, that doesn't explain what animal is responsible for doing this. Is, you can see the bark and you can actually see lines. Well, those are tooth marks. See all those little lines are tooth marks. I don't know what it is, but I know that anything that shreds trees while screaming is too dangerous for me to be in the same forest as. And that's only what's been going on for the past couple months. There's over a year's worth of cryptid content to uncover, so I encourage you to watch Gary Reed Unfrequented World and see for yourself. In the meantime, leave me your best guess as to what's doing this. Maybe we can crack one of the weirdest modern unsolved mysteries in all of Ontario. Number 2. A YouTuber named Seeking Legends has over 7 years worth of videos where he tracks down spirits and cryptids throughout the Las Vegas area and surrounding states. His subscribers know he doesn't play up his videos at all, and isn't afraid to say when he thinks a location has nothing abnormal to offer. This wasn't the case when he went to a haunted forest on February 16th, 2018, in search of the infamous White Witch, the spirit of a woman who once hiked this area a lot with her family, and who was taken captive by unsavory locals. She escaped, but her family did not, and ever since then she has been roaming the woods looking for revenge. She cursed the land before taking her life in the very spot Cryptid Hunter stands now. He uses a paranormal dousing rod, which is said to be able to tap into supernatural energy to better communicate with any nearby spirits. It isn't long before he finds one to speak with. Can you point the rod to me? You see that I'm not moving this. And I do mean speak with. There are no approaching footsteps, so it's not someone hiking. Just eerie voices carrying over the water, just like the legends say. And the voices patiently wait until the command is complete before talking again. Bend the rod in the opposite direction of me. I don't think it's his nerves moving the rod, and his hand looks almost completely still to me. So maybe there is some truth to this piece of equipment after all. If you were a victim of somebody in here, can you make my rod spin, please? Here is an even better close-up of his hand at 8 minutes and 30 seconds. As the spirits continue to turn it around and around, none of his fingers are moving at all in the slightest. When asked for additional confirmation that the White Witch is here, two strange notes play. If you don't think this is paranormal, then tell me what you think would have made this noise in the middle of the forest. Soon he feels a presence guiding him and uses the rod to determine where to go next. If this is where you want me to be, stop spinning the rod. Now, where are you standing? Point the rod. These instructions are further confirmed using his EMF meter, and at the end is a strange beeping noise coming from deeper in the woods that the EMF meter can't even make. If this is where you wanted me to stand. And just to prove it wasn't a coincidence, he easily gets it to respond again. Can you do that again? Thank you. There's no button on the meter for him to press to make it go up, supernatural or not. This was all the work of an external force of some kind. Every time he challenges the witch to move the meter, it does so without fail. Like here for example, the timing is too much of a coincidence to be fake. Now, unless you can make this device go on, then I'm not going to believe that anything is here haunting this area. Apparently, it must have grown frustrated using the EMF meter over and over again, so it decides to answer his demands in a different way. Make the lights go on. 
If you are the sole And before you say these are just lightning bugs, look again. They go from left to right one time and then start over again in the exact same spot. So it's likely not an insect. It's getting dark soon and the park closes so Seeking Legends has to leave. Hopefully someday he returns to resume the conversation. But which spirits aren't his only specialty? As mentioned before, Seeking Legends has experience hunting cryptids too. The desert cave is said to be plagued by skinwalkers, vicious tricksters of Native American legend who can assume a semi-human animal-like form. He isn't able to go down far because of breathing problems but his worries start no sooner than the entrance when this glow stick, hung up as a marker to avoid getting lost, begins to sway in place all on its own. He's nowhere near where it begins to move, and maybe it's just me but it looks like it's swinging even harder three minutes later, definitely not slowing down. Then outside of the cave he hears what could be a Native American drum. Hello? And with one hand on the camera and the other visible, the angle shows it couldn't have been him making the noise. Please tell me you guys heard that. I will admit that the drums are a little hard to hear, but this last part isn't. Try to tell me what this voice is saying, because it sounds like it might be a different language to me, perhaps even backwards. I'm interested to see if you think this is a skinwalker or voiceover editing. It sounds like it's coming from behind the camera to me, but I'm not sure. I've got a challenge for you. Since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next 5 seconds? Because I upload 4 new scary videos every week. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. Number 1. Years ago I analyzed a video of a giant humanoid creature seen roaming the desert in Portugal. While well, new evidence of the creature is making fresh rounds on the internet, and this photograph supposedly shows what it eats, which unfortunately is us. A strong looking man with a crew cut and fatigues is no match against this creature, as it pulls him towards its open maw. He is not wearing civilian clothing. If anything, his outfit matches those worn at the special ops base where the original video was taken. All of the finer details of the creature seem to match as well. The dramatic bend of the back leg compared to the more developed upper arms, its cone-like head, its unnatural slouch are all there, and according to this picture, it's apparently a cyclops creature as well. Of course, there's a good chance that this is photoshopped, if it was real, I think that there would be an accompanying video, or at least more than one picture. If anything, for the sake of the person about to be devoured, I really hope this isn't real. Siren Head sightings are being reported all over the world. After a 30 year slumber, it appears to have awakened. 